Affordability Crisis Impacting North Durham Communities. Dan Kearns, The Standard. North Durham. With high gas prices, grocery costs continuing to be expensive for most families, and a lack of affordable housing, many residents in North Durham are having trouble making ends meet. Mona Amond, Executive Director of North House, has seen a skyrocketing increase in their client list in just a year. Based in Uxbridge, but serving all of North Durham, North House is a charity which works to prevent homelessness by connecting clients with a number of supports, programs, and assistance. If we look at our client base in May 2021 compared to May 2022, our caseload has increased 156%. We've added three new housing workers to help with the huge increase in clientele, she told The Standard. Ms. Amon's current concern is the lack of affordable housing for North Durham residents. The biggest concern is there is no available housing, much less affordable housing. People cannot afford units which do come up for rent, and this, along with the cost of living, is contributing to the homeless issue in the region. People are now having to choose between paying rent or feeding themselves. For people who are struggling to pay their rent, they are at risk of losing their housing and for those who have been in their home for a while, they are most likely paying a reasonable rent. If evicted, they will most certainly not find anything in that price range today. Not only are we, at North House, trying to find housing for people, we are also trying to retain as many tenancies as we can, so people can stay in their homes and not enter into homelessness. Couple this with rising food and gas prices, and local residents are having a tough time balancing their regular costs of living. These rising costs are making it almost impossible for people to support themselves. It is forcing them to choose between rent or putting food on the table for their family. We are very fortunate to have some really great food banks throughout the North, which help to support the need for food, Ms. Emlon said. Still, the rising cost of living is putting increased pressure on North Durham's food banks. We have seen an increase in the number of clients since Christmas. We have new clients signing up every week. Our clients are really struggling with the cost of food and gas, Operation Scugog Chairperson Karen Teed stated in an email. Food donations are always down during the summer, but now even more so with the cost of groceries. We have more clients asking if we can help with a gas card. For those who wish to donate to Operation Scugog, Ms. Teed has a list of suggested items such as apple juice and juice boxes, granola bars, cereal, canned fruit, crackers, and cookies. Household items such as toilet paper, shampoo, laundry soap, toothbrushes, and tampons are also in need at the local food bank. Cupcake Junkie joins Port Perry business scene. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Scugog. Cupcake Junkie is one of the latest businesses to set up shop in downtown Port Perry. The business is located at 50 Water Street, across from Lake Scugog. Manager Jen Braid explained to The Standard, the business is in a prime location. I love the foot traffic. All of the owners of the businesses in this particular plaza are absolutely great and very friendly. Obviously, the view isn't too hard on the eyes with the lake right there, she said. She also talked about how things have gone for the business since they opened the Port Perry location. It's been amazing. It's a great location. It's been steadily getting busier and busier. Everyone has been really friendly and really wonderful. When asked what she enjoys most about working at this business, Miss Braid said she loves the excitement people get coming in the door for cupcakes. Cupcake Junkie sells cupcakes, cakes, and gluten-free and vegan dessert options. For more information, go online to www.cupcakejunkie.ca. Uxbridge is bridging the gap for local seniors. Courtney McClure, The Standard, Uxbridge. If you're a new senior living in the township of Uxbridge, you may not know what resources are available. Bridge the Gap can help. The development of the content for Bridge the Gap was thanks to the efforts of township staff, explained Councillor Bruce Gerard. Specifically, Hunter Jarvis and Jennifer Noble. The initiative for Bridge the Gap started when the age-friendly committee of the council and the Township of Uxbridge applied for a provincial grant. Bridge the Gap was fully paid for by the Province of Ontario's Ministry of Seniors and Accessibility, and the creative development of the guide was provided by a local company called Take Root Creative. 
There are also articles created by the Age-Friendly Committee of Council included within the Bridge the Gap Guide. The Township of Uxbridge wrote, on their website, Without the funding of the provincial government and collaboration with the Age-Friendly Committee, this project would not have come to fruition. This magazine was created to ensure all seniors have access to a directory of services they are likely to be interested in, explained Councillor Gerard, who went on to add, it's much more than a phone book. Bridge the Gap also has helpful and informative articles included within its pages. The guide outlines resources available to older adults living in Uxbridge. There is information about all kinds of resources, from healthcare to volunteer opportunities throughout the community. It acts as a one-stop source, making it easier for older people to engage within the Uxbridge community and stay connected. The Township of Uxbridge recognizes not all older Uxbridge residents have internet or computer access, so there are physical copies of Bridge the Gap available to residents who prefer keeping a hard copy at home. You can find physical copies at many local businesses in Uxbridge, including pharmacies, the Uxbridge Senior Center, the Bridge Social, and many other places throughout the Uxbridge community. All guides are free of charge. If you have questions about Bridge the Gap, please contact the Arena and Recreation Manager for the Township of Uxbridge, Hunter Jarvis, or Uxbridge Councillor Bruce Gerard. If you're a senior or older person living within the community of Uxbridge, you can find further resources by visiting or heading over to the official Ontario webpage at ontario.ca. The Do's and Don'ts of Bear Encounters How to Stay Safe Around Bears Courtney McClure, The Standard, North Durham Did you know a black bear was spotted around Albright Road in Concession 6 near the Walker Woods Hiking Trail near Oxbridge? Here are the Do's and Don'ts of Black Bear Safety. If you notice a black bear around your area, call Bearwise at 1-866-514-2327, TTY. If a bear is roaming your neighborhood streets, checking garbage cans, in a tree, or pulling down a bird feeder, you can call 705-945-7641. This line is available 24-7 starting from April 1st to November 30th. If the bear poses an immediate threat to you or anyone else, you can call 911 or your local police department. Signs that a bear might be a potential threat include seeing one enter a schoolyard, noticing a bear stalking people, or entering a residential area. If you encounter a bear yourself, there are a few things you can do. Slowly back away while waving your arms and making noise, and wait for the bear to leave. If you're in a residential area, try getting inside a building or a vehicle. Only play dead if you're near a mother bear with cubs. Likewise, there are a few things you shouldn't do if you encounter a bear. Do not run, swim, or climb a tree. Do not kneel anywhere near the bear. If you encounter a bear while walking your pet, do not let your pet off its leash. If a bear attacks you, use bear spray if you have some on hand. According to Ontario.ca, you should fight back with everything you have. Again, it's important not to play dead unless you encounter a mother bear with her cubs. In this case, she is more preoccupied with ensuring her young will not be harmed, so playing dead can satisfy the sense of immediate threat she feels, and she will remove her cubs safely from the area. If you have a dog and take frequent walks in woodsy areas, it's a good idea to become familiar with tips and tricks on staying bear-wise. If you're used to walking your dog unleashed, you may want to think twice. If a bear notices an unleashed dog, it may become aggressive and attack. When a bear sees an unleashed dog returning to its owner, it may think it's in danger and chase the dog. So your dog could potentially lead the bear right to you. For more information about bears and how to stay safe, please visit Ontario.ca and look for the page Be Bearwise and Prevent Bear Encounters. Sister Holy Hi all you faithful people out there. It's a wonderful day today and life is full. We've had a lot of rain lately, but once it's done, there is still more life. Even though we've all gone through COVID, we still deal with the usual batch of viruses like flu and colds. We seem to have adjusted to these, and on a yearly basis, we've settled into a routine of expecting to overcome them. There is still more life. That's a change in perspective, isn't it? Christ said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The implication being, he is a generous God who shares this overcoming with those who love him. 
Some out there deal with cancer and others with emotional struggles or the diverse kinds of diseases experienced in the world. Yet Christ still said he had overcome the world and we could be of good cheer. This apparent conflict flies in the face of so-called logic to many. The unknown, or more aptly put, that of which we are unaware, can stimulate frustration, confusion, or even culminate in anger toward the obvious truths others live in. Of course, as logical thinkers, we know there are many different kinds of logic, which all depend on the food chain of thought one lives off of. Yet they are all closed loops sustaining the persistent thoughts which flow from them. Struggles can come from these emotional or psychological logic loops. We need to understand these struggles are life's confrontations to encourage us to adjust the way we view the world and our responses within it. A change of world view is difficult because the view we hold can often be supported by others' perplexed interpretations. This can keep one oriented in a framework of logic shifting, lily pad jumping, still offering little or no eternal perspective for life here, with no real overview. Eventually, the framework doesn't hold water, and we are confronted with the need for change and no solidifying direction. Oh, if only there were a perspective which offered a stable framework for all of life's issues, both for temporary daily life and eternal life. Oh yeah, thank God, there is. Better and greater than lily pad jumping is the wonder generated in the ways believers live. When life depends on Christ's finished work on the cross, including the provision of a changed internal life, a new kind of life and logic loop results. This loop incorporates all of life here in this temporary framework and all of life in the hereafter. I know a woman of Dene Aboriginal heritage who shares Christ's heritage as well. She lived close to nature, regularly stopping and communing with it on her travels. Many a time she would share with me about observing a fox, a bear, or deer in the woods or by the roadside. Often she would tell of times she watched hawks soar or little birds bathe in the dust, picking and gleaning the best tiny stones for their crop, to gristmill the grains they eat, just enjoying life as they were made. They were unencumbered by the mess we make of things around. She found life, amidst the chaos we often bring, as we try to assert our will on a God-made earth, our logic loop on a place already with an order, just because we want it our way. She often commented on people wanting their own way, and admitted she struggled with the same thing stemming from her own way. But then I would see a reflection in the moment and a peace come over her concerned face. Inevitably, she would say something like, But it doesn't matter what I think is needed. God knows and has it all under his amazing control. A genuine release would occur, and I would learn all over again what I thought I already knew. God is a loving, patient God who takes care of those who allow him to, who defer to his judgment among all this trouble we assert on real life around. Of course, he tries to help us all, but so many turn from his hand, choosing to look away. Frequently, she would have times where she was food insecure or housing challenged. It was then she would live in her car and take any gift from a loving hand. Then in other times, when she had a surplus, she would share it with those she personally knew had a need as well. The generosity of the widow's might is the greatest grace to take part in. Her concern for her children never stopped as she prayed daily and made every active effort she could to touch their lives with God's grace, as she understood it. She would say, I'm stacking up blessings for my children and theirs, because prayer, if it comes from God's sharing, never stops working until it's accomplished the good thing it was sent out for. The one who prays may leave this world one day, but the prayer remains as a faithful servant doing the work. So I know my kids will be okay, in due time. Her confidence helped me much in dealing with my own children. I thank God for her life and insight. It came from the raw, rubber-meets-the-road realness of life, yet it soared wonderfully at times. She passed last week. I will miss you, Holly, Holy, Faith Richardson, but I have this, an eternal perspective which allows me to know I will see you again in the great by-and-by. -by. Our family loves you and carries the memory of your love for us, our Indigenous brothers and sisters, and all of life. Say hey go, Sister Holy, which means hello and goodbye in Mohawk, pronounced say hey go. 
The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.